is becoming the new hub for remote workers. Mm, wow. So people that are coming from different states are working remotely or Keeping asking their their, and just where, where in the other states and just moving. All right, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to Real Estate Wednesday. She now got the glasses for you guys. <laughs> she about to go in. This is yes. about to be an educational lesson today. She got the glasses on. I do, I do. Looking good today. Real Estate Wednesday. I am Joe Wallace, and this is... Rebecca Wallace. Today, we are talking about... The wealth is in the home buying. Ooh, the wealth is in the home buying. You know, I like talking about money. I know you do. If you're on right now, make sure you click that thumbs up, that like button. Make sure you comment hashtag YMA Nation down in the comment section. And make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed yet, you need to subscribe, subscribe to the channel. Yeah. To the channel. Click that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. So I'm interested. I'm going to hear about this wealth, about this money. You know, yeah. we just came off of Wealth Building Monday. Yeah, so more wealth building uh, information rolling into real estate. Okay, good deal. So Let's good go, deal. guys. And make sure you check out Good Vibrations down in the description. So scroll down, you'll see the link to Good Vibrations, that hot summer single by Joe Wallace featuring Major Maestro. Man, yeah. I, I jam that song on how many times every day. <laughs> so let's talk about some real estate. Let's do it. So, um, many people want to become homeowners for different reasons. So, mm -hmm. you know, it could be a life goal. Um, you know, they want to start renting. Uh, they're growing their family. So they're ready to purchase a home and prepare for, you know, their family and the family growth or whatever. So one great reason is to build wealth. That's one of the really great reasons to purchase a home. So we're going to discuss um, how you can do that, why you should do that, and why this market is set up for you to be able to do that faster than you typically would be able to be do, to do that. Well, this should be good. Um, real estate is in the top three ways to build wealth. Um, do you know that Real estate agents now make double what Wall Street people make. Wow. Wow. Wall Street people, where you guys at? <laughs> is, is, is that factual? Well, my, well, I don't know how many people on here actually on Wall Street <laughs> but, <laughs> watching the Wine um, Nation podcast. But this is going more towards people who have goals or if you are a current homeowner, why or what you could do to be able to utilize your home to build wealth or um, continue to grow um, how much money you have in assets. Okay. Nice. Let's go. So right now, the average home price in the upstate of South Carolina, so this is the average, is $297,000. Okay. So, the upstate of South Carolina is still well below what the median home average home price is nationally. Okay. So, this is, is keyed more towards South Carolinians, um, this conversation, but it could also be true for your area because there are still cities and places nationally that have not caught up to what the national average is that are continuing to grow. So, you have hot spots where you have a lot of influx of people moving in right now, right. which is, of course, driving up the home prices in those areas. So now is a good time to understand how to move your money or how to get in to get that equity and then bank on that equity, mm -hmm. okay? So buying right now is definitely what you should do. So I know Joe talked about on Wealth Building Monday, a 21-day challenge. 21-day right? challenge. 
Well, I have a challenge for you guys. Uh oh, she got Become a challenge. A homeowner. That's my challenge to you guys. Okay. Um, put yourself, put your credit, save money, and put yourself in a position to be able to purchase your first home. Um, if you can do so within the next three to six months, so that you are able to capitalize on what's coming. Okay. So let me jump in because you brought up the twenty-one day challenge. Because there's probably people that just come on just for your show. Like, I only watch that. So, the 21-day challenge states that it takes 21 days to create a good behavior. Mm -hmm. And it takes 90 days to create a permanent change, right? So, if your goal is to become a homeowner, create the goal. I want to become a homeowner. Now, you need to understand the factors that it's going to take to become a homeowner, like good credit, um, being at a job for two years, and then you just like start that course, right? Start that course, and you track that course. So over the next twenty one days, like, how are you going to track your credit? Doing all the things, like, are you carrying too much debt on your credit? Do you got collections? But what am I going to do to start that path, right? And have it laid out for, and create milestones, right? So I'm gonna do it for twenty one days. I'm gonna track it every day for twenty one days. Even if you do on Credit Karma, Credit Karma shows you your score every day on TransUnion. And you, and, and you just track it every day. And then after that point, then you have milestone month one, month two, month three, month four. How much am I saving every month? How's my credit moving every month? Right. Exactly. 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 So, and that leads to, that means buying right now can definitely allow you to gain quick equity in the market. Absolutely. So anytime you get into a market that the homes are below what your national average is, but you're seeing an influx of people that are buying in the area, right, mm -hmm. that your your price point is continuing to go up. So if your price point's here and here's the national average, then you have equity gain. Because, of course, the national average is going to continue to go up I'm as lost. well. I'm lost. As so, what's this hand? You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so tell them, tell them, what's this hand and what's this hand so they understand the little hand movement. So, what you're able to do is if you're able to gain quick equity, mm -hmm. fast equity in the home, then you, you're able to then pull that equity out and start creating um, portfolio. So... Mm, you can. I like, I like that creating a portfolio of assets. You can do one of two things. If you get into the market, you purchase a home, and this is this is a conversation that I try to have with people um, because some people go into home buying and they want a hundred percent perfect home right then, right? Mm -hmm. Get into something that you know is going to build equity right now because six months from now especially with this market. You could very well have enough equity to where you could pull that equity out and then have a nice down payment to move forward with, you know, a property that meets more of what you want and turn that first property into a rental property. Now, why, why is this such a great idea? Because not only... Do you have 
you may have leftover money from the equity that you pull out. Right. 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 But that same property that you're turning into a rental property is going to gain more equity over time because, let's face it, especially in the hot areas like down south, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, where people are coming from the north and coming from the west, um, the home, they're going to continue to gain equity because you have such a high demand for properties in those areas. So you're going to rebuild the equity in that rental property, but not only that, the rental rates are going up. So I got another statistic for you. Let's go. 27% of sellers are not looking to purchase right after selling due to the the price of property or and or they don't want to get into bidding wars. Mm. So because of the low inventory, you have 27% of sellers who aren't going in back into buying a home. So what are they going to do? Rent. Rent. What's happening with the rental rates right now? They're going up. They're going up. So the property that you bought that you're paying $1,000 of mortgage on, three bedroom, two bath, 1,600 square foot in some areas, you're going to get $2,000 in rent for. Right. So now not only are you paying your first mortgage with what you're getting off the rental, but now you're helping to pay your second mortgage with what you're making off the rental. So let me step back for a second. Let me understand this. So if I have a house, uh-huh. and the house is $250,000, I owe two hundred fifty dollars on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, they come and do an appraisal and say the house is valued now. You've been in it for years. It's valued now at three hundred and fifty thousand. So now three hundred and fifty thousand, I sell that house. I could walk away with maybe like ninety grand. Well, after 80, fees, uh, after yeah. fees and taxes, maybe eight, eight, eighty thousand. I'm just throwing out a number, being hypothetical. So now I got eighty thousand dollars. You saying people are going by statistics going to rent because, and I see this in like the Facebook groups too, like. Oh, this home buying process is so frustrating. Yep. And like, there's so many people complaining. They about hold that. out their equity. They hold their money. And they're waiting it out. So from my perspective, and I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying from my perspective, I would think that if I had $80,000, if I get into the next property, even though it may be a bit higher, Cause right now it's starting to kind of stabilize. And you just did a show last week on the housing market cooling off. So right. She ready to jump in. Right. I can't I, even I'm finish. Go- I no, can't no, even. No, 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 she no. was all over my show last on Monday. Hey, look, look. That's right. No, finish, she, finish. But she I have me to a hit thought. The button. <laughs> <laughs> she grabbed my arm. <laughs> finish, but I have a thought. So keep no, going. No, no. Tell me your thought. I'm done. Go ahead. So your thought is. Okay. So. Interestingly enough, mm-hmm. um, uh, there's a couple articles that came out. So one of them was talking about you have, this is for the upstate of South Carolina. Okay. Again, I, I said this right. was going to be South Carolina-based show. Um, Greenville in the upstate is becoming the new hub for remote workers. Mm, wow. So people that are coming from different states are working remotely or Keeping asking their their jobs their and just where in the other states and just moving here. Right. Okay. A lot of people were moving from California too due to like the COVID and like a lot of well, the restrictions. I was going to say that now that the new co- the this new variant is out, the Delta variant, and you have people that are now going want to stay remote or doing remote work Mm -hmm. and the delta variant and i want to get on a COVID thing but it is hitting more of your metro cities Mm. right Mm -hmm. so and your younger people Mm -hmm. so like your college age metro so now people are starting to look for places like greenville that you know, haven't really been hit as hard as other locations. Um, and not just Greenville, but like 
other areas that aren't as populated and been hit as hard right. to come to. Okay. Right. I'm just waiting to try to see where this go. It, it's been three minutes. Okay. Let me try. Okay. Hello. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the airport. Okay. I want to hear, hear what you were about to say. So, uh, so people that are moving here is going to continue. You were talking about the cool down. Right. The cool down is only temporary. Oh. The cool down is only temporary mm -hmm. because of that. Because of this new Delta variant, because it's hitting different cities, because it's hitting people differently, now you're going to have a second wave of people coming from those Ooh. places. Well, that's what's wow. projected. Okay. So what Didn't is that going to do? That that's why I was trying to get to the end. I'm like, where is this going? So I know it's going to be you something got, good. Yeah. Because you couldn't wait to jump in. I said, I know it's going to be something good. So you have to take all of that. And now you have to say, okay, it's cooling off. It, it's kind of leveling out right now. Now's the time to get in and buy or pull your equity out and buy and rent because the rental values are going up with the housing values. Wow. So, so that's like, why I was going, but I didn't finish. Yeah, go ahead. I was thinking that if, if I was to sell my house and I pull out all this cash, or all the all the return that I have, right? Right. So I've got eighty thousand, and I go and rent for two thousand. I just for a year, I just threw away twenty four grand in rent, and now and now I'm trying to buy a house again when I could have got right back into another home, and and over that twelve months, you know, those that two thousand dollars would have been a part of it would have been going to the principal of the loan, right. Keep going. And then also with the housing out here, continue to. I started off checking it every other week, just like most people do. Then it got out of control. I, I couldn't help myself. I started checking it day after day after day. I didn't realize that I was becoming addicted until my wife said something. What did she say? She said, it's just a credit score, relax. Are you checking your credit score? Huh? Oh. Hold on. Appreciate that at the end of the year, I may still have 20,000 in equity along with how much I paid down in it. Right. But that's because you have a great realtor for a <laughs> wife that can give you all the information. <laughs> Then a lot of these people, I mean. <laughs> You're going to give her that one. You're going to give her that one. No, seriously. So if looking from a buyer's side, I see the housing like right now in the upstate of South Carolina, in, in Spartanburg, South Carolina, mm -hmm. um, the median income and the affordability for a house is like right here. Like they're almost break even. Mm. Me meaning that having a median income, you almost cannot afford the median home value. It's wow. like right here. Wow. So while you're right, it's going to come to a point like where Greenville is, where it's below. The median income cannot afford a median home value in Greenville. That's like in the big cities right now. Right. So you have to go where you can afford. Right. That's that's number one. Like people um, you have to be able to understand where their market is for their price point and buy right there for right now until you either build your income up or build that equity in the home where you have some funds, more cash flow, um, to pull out of the equity in that first property. And then that residual income off of that first property will help you purchase that second property that's going to be more at that medium price point. Right. That makes sense. I hope you guys are learning. I hope you guys are taking notes. So this is good information. Yeah, that's why I, I, like, I really wanted to feed your mind and help you to understand that. Feed your mind. Yeah, and help you to understand... 
<laughs> I'm feeding my mind. Go ahead. Mind. Go ahead. I'm feeding, um, feeding my and mind. And understand the importance of, you know, you want to buy something. Yes, you want it to be absolutely perfect for you and your family, right? But if you want a three-bedroom, two-bath on half acre, and you know that right now you can find a three-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath on a quarter acre, and it's going to put you in your affordability for right now, guess what? That house is going to build equity six, seven, eight, nine months from now. Right. Guess what? Make that a rental. Pull the equity out. And what you rent it for will be able to cover that mortgage plus give you residual income month over month to help you be able to afford your next house. Wealth building right there, creating passive income. Yes. There it is. Yes. And and here's a, another way to see it too. If you don't want well, I don't want to be responsible for trying to rent out a property and it, if that's your, if that's your choice, you can always contact PMI. Southern states. They can all, always contact PMI. Hey Vic, you getting the plug. Hey, you they can the always plug. contact yeah. PMI. Those guys are the um top company in a in the upstate of South Carolina. And they do everything for you. You don't even have to do anything. Property right? management, yeah. But, and but if I, you're interested in, in selling or if you're interested in learning how to refinance to get that equity out, uh, you can always contact the Pyramid Group with Keller Williams absolutely. at 864-249-1437. Uh, contact us. We can get you with lenders who do refinances. Uh, if you're wanting to sell, um, you can still do that. You could sell and take that equity that's and keep some say. of it. Yeah, that's what and, I was about to say. And put some, <clears throat> you know, have your 20% or have something down towards your next home um, and continue to build it that way. Real quick, before you end, that's what I was about to say. So, at uh, doing a show, you said, you know what, your first property may not be the property that you want, but get into something where instead of paying rent. Right. Right. So if I can only afford X amount per month right now, say it's, say if a person can only afford 1200 a month. Right. Right. So, and that's not going to get me the home I want because that's only going to get me around. 200. Yeah, 200, around 1800 yeah. square foot home. But I need like three bedrooms or four bedrooms. So, but I'm going to start off here. Right. And I may be here for two years, Right or a year, or whatever it is, and then now if I got $40,000 in equity in that house, when I sell it, or $50,000 of equity in that house, I could sell that house and you a large portion. Not even portion, two years in this market. Right, I'm just uh, going on. Yeah. Right. But I could take a portion of that, and I could use to put down on that next property that's $250,000, and now I just paid down with a loan that's almost similar to what I was paying here. So now I got that larger home I want. And now you're renting out a 1,800-square-foot home for about between eighteen to $2,200 a month. You have the first mortgage paid, and you're going to end well, up with... Well, actually, I, I, um, what I was saying oh, is they sell? you sell the first house, oh, yeah. pull the equity out, so your first house was two hundred thousand. Just say for instance, your first house two hundred thousand. You in a house for two years. You got fifty thousand dollars of equity. You sell that house for two hundred and fifty. Say you walk away. I don't know. Just throwing our numbers. Two hundred and forty k. Yeah. The bank got to get paid off first. That leave you with forty thousand dollars. Just throwing out a number. But that forty thousand, they say, hey, you know what? Now I see the house that I want that I I've dreamed about, but couldn't afford it back then because. That house now is fourteen hundred dollars a month, and I can only afford twelve hundred. Where if I take this forty thousand dollars that I just earned, I'm gonna take that forty thousand and put it down into this two hundred and forty or two hundred and fifty thousand dollar home, and now I'm in that home paying twelve hundred a month right. because I put that forty thousand paying down the the mortgage. Right. Bam. And then you still have all that equity, and then you're still gonna be building equity in the new home. Because you got all that equity, as soon as, yeah, yeah. All that money you put down, that's immediate equity in your house, man. Yeah. You guys feel. And I always use my brother as an example. He started with a, a smaller home. Mm -hmm. He got about thirty thousand of equity in that in about two years. Yep. The housing market started to turn. He went and got a brand new townhome. 
and now his brand new town home that he's been in for less than a year, he has about forty thousand dollars of equity in that. Guys, real estate, wealth real building, estate, wealth building. Go, guys. If Let's you go. need help, call, 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 call questions. Call, pick up the phone. It's free. It's free. It's a free phone call. Free yes. information. Free, free and advice. We will guide you on how to do that, but you have to be, you know, willing to go through the process, and, and that's the main. That's the important thing. That's it. You know? Before we hit the button, you're like, oh, it's going to be a good show today. It was a good show today. It was a good show today. Everybody who's still on who watched the complete show, guys, I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you guys can take the information and apply it to your life, your situation, if you're not a homeowner right now, and not just in the upstate or just being in South Carolina. You're in Texas, Chicago, it, Anywhere, California, California, New York, If you want to sell and move to the upstate, call us. If oh. you want to buy in the upstate, call us. If you want to rent your property in those areas and move to the upstate, call us. What if they are in Texas and they want to sell a house and buy the house? They can call you, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter call where us. you are in the U.S. If you're interested in buying or selling a home, call the Pyramid Group at 864 864- 249-1437. 864-249-1437. We will see you guys on Friday for Sports Talk Friday. YMA, Young Millionaires Association. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the association.